Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn them to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 34, and we're going to begin reading in verse 27. Exodus 34, and we'll begin in verse 27. Uh, while you're turning there, again, remember me, and I hope at least the majority of my family as we travel to Florida. It's a rough job, but somebody's got to do it, and uh, but we'll only be there one day. Uh, Exodus uh, 34, beginning in verse 27, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words. After the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the table of the wor on the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wished not that his, the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his faith shone, face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh, nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the, of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai, and till Moses had done speaking with them, and he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out and he, and he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness, for your watch care, for your protection to the church here at Dover. Lord, we pray that you would continue to protect us as a people that you put a gate about around us, Lord, and that you would cause us to grow in faith and grow in Christ. Lord, we pray for each and every person that is meeting with us this morning, that you might uh, speak your name unto them, Lord, that they might see you high and lifted up, and that you would open the eyes of the lost and they'd run quickly to you. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching this morning concerning the results of time spent with God. Now, if there was ever a time that we live, there is less time spent with God today than there ever was in any other history, at least, of our nation. People genuinely looking to God on a one-on-one -on -one level. Now, we'll see as we study this event in Moses' life that uh, it wasn't a congregational meeting. Now, the covenant that we're going to look at, it was a congregational covenant, but the meeting was, was with Moses alone. So the first thing you have to kind of answer for yourself is how frequently you spend time alone with God. Now, I dare say many of us spend time alone, but that, that doesn't mean alone with God. Uh, time alone will do you no good. Usually it, it leads to problems, if anything. Time alone, but time alone with God is time very well spent. And it's a time that will change your life. And as we'll see in Moses, that, that's exactly what happened. It impacted him for the rest of his life. And that is what we as the Lord's people ought to uh uh, or to set our goal upon is spending time alone with Christ. Now, we live in a day and age where we're pulled in so many directions, the devil has already uh, set the stage that you have no time to do this. 
From the time you get up to the time that you go to bed, there's something, 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 one after another, after another, after another, until when you get to bed, you're just, you're just done. I know last night, uh, 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 Eric and I worked on my new smokehouse part of the day. I came to town and, and did a few things, and then we did that, and then I had to rush all the way over to Olmstead, and it was fun, but it took time, and then just to Olmstead and back is three hours total travel, and, and, and so we see the whole day was shot before, before I really realized it. And again, when I got home, Donna had been canning, and I tidied up the kitchen a little bit, best I know how anyway, brought in wood, and I was literally exhausted. I helped Joey to bed, and I was done. Now, that is where the devil wants you. Totally exhausted. Right. And much of the time today, that, that is exactly where we're at. And, you know, uh, it, 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 is a, it is a waste of time is really what it is. So going back in our text to verse 27, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write these words after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Now, that middle word in the verse, tenor, we often think about the man's high portion of singing, but that's not the only definition of tenor. Tenor can be like this. Where have you been? Or, where have you been? It's the tenor in I said, the way I said it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and the, the law that Moses was going to give had to be in a certain way. It had to come across. It had to be direct. Now, the, the, the words of grace is wonderful, but the words of the law are harsh. They're difficult. If the law isn't followed, you go to hell. That's pretty much a very harsh term, is it not? So he wasn't writing a melody. He was writing, he was writing something that would be hard to swallow. And, and so in addition to be accurately writing it down, he had to do it with the right, the right tenor, the right, the right, the, the right feel to it. And, you know, and that can, you know, uh, we don't write letters a lot, uh, a lot much anymore in the day which we live, and our texts are in incomplete sentences. Uh, I was texting an old teacher one day, and I was making sure I had everything together because I figured that she was going to say something about it if I didn't. And uh, and but in that day, it had to be spoken well. You had to get the message across. Uh, uh, I had a postcard, and I guess Ashley took it when she got mother's stuff, but it was a, a, a postcard from dad when he was in Vietnam to mom. And, uh, you know, back then, uh, they didn't do X and O's and all that stuff. They just wrote it out. And how much he loved mom and how much he missed mom and how he wished he was back in Tennessee and all this stuff. Kind of a little strange. If y'all that knew my dad, it was kind of strange reading that from him. But it, it said what it said. And you know what? He wrote every word out. There, there was no abbreviations. There was nothing. Uh, you knew what he said. And that was the purpose of the law is that we would understand the very character of God and not only his character, his expectations. Now, remember what does the New Testament say concerning the law? It is our schoolmaster, right? It teaches us what holiness is. And it also teaches us that we can't do it, right? That, that, that is the summation of the whole law. So Moses goes up the mount, on the mountain, receives the law, uh, writes it in the, in the correct contents, uh, context. Excuse me, Verse 28, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, and he did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, 
Who else had the same time, the exact same time of fasting? And that was Christ, right? That was the Lord Jesus Christ, the very same time alone with God. Now, uh, you think the value of 40 days and 40 nights being alone with God. Now, all the decisions I've made uh, concerning my wife and my children, I would do it all over again. Let me cl uh, clarify it like that. But what did Moses tell us? It were good for a man not to marry. Mm -hmm. And why? Because then you could have 40 days again and again and again and again. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm committed to work. I, I committed myself to Donna 35 years ago. It, it's up to me to see that she has what she needs. You see what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with that. The Bible, I think the Bible promotes marriage. But on the very same token, your attention is divided. And now we have six children, and my attention is divided again. And now I, have, now I have five grandchildren, and my attention is divided again. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and not to discourage any of those things. I mean, the Bible says it's good so that, uh, that, our, uh, that uh, our children's children, children hear of the goodness of God. But on the very same token, just know your 40-day stints are never going to happen unless when you get very old. And so we see that Moses makes a great sacrifice because what do we know for sure about Moses? He at least had two wives. He had... And so we... You know, you ever wonder what was going on with him while he was 40, 40 days away? Now... You can correct me if I'm wrong. I, uh, Jared is my scholar. Uh, I don't hear children mentioned from Moses. Uh, did he have them? I don't know. But I don't hear them mentioned. I'll, I'll say it that way. In fact, his, uh, the ones that followed in his footsteps were just, just men that he knew, Caleb and Joshua. They were no relation to him. And, 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 and so we find then that if we want to be close to God, it's going to cost you something. It's going to be a, a sacrifice of time. And this is the one in the modern day that, that is difficult for every one of us. It's got to be planned for. You know what? I can't just say, Don, I'm, I'm going to be gone for 40 days. Take care. Right? And none of us men can do that. It has to be planned for. And let me sure in the if not, you're in a more difficult situation. <clears throat> the burden of the children go to you, right? I can I can buy food all day long, but I don't I know very little about preparing food. That's Donna's burden, right? So how are you ladies gonna make that preparation? How, how are you going to put that into practice? And, and, and so we see that we, we probably know never ever are we going to be able to give 40 days and 40 nights to our Lord. Now, this will give you food for thought in your private Bible study this week. How long did it rain in the flood of Noah? 40 days and 40 nights. You know what? Noah didn't have much of a choice but to stay in, did he? That's right. And, and, and so we find that, first of all, if we want this closeness and this nearness unto God, that, uh, that we have to plan for it and set time aside for it. I want you to see also, in this time, he heard from God. Now, uh, only you can answer this for yourself, but personally, how long has it been since you heard from God? Think about Church of Christ people. You know what they think the Holy Spirit is? That book laying in your lap right now. Right. That's precious. But if it was anybody in the Godhead, 
I would have to say it was Christ. Right? John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same came and dwelt among men. Right? And, and, and so if that be true, and I don't think it is, they never heard from God. Right? Now, individually, and I understand there's not new prophecies. He's not going to give us the book of Larry. Right? But you do hear specifically from God. And you know what? I'll go even further. If you never had, you're probably not saved. Right? <laughs> and, and, and so we find then that this is very much time well spent. Is it sacrificial? You betcha. Is it hard? You, you're more than hard. But at the same time, I want you to understand it's time well spent. You know why? Because you hear from God. You, you, you hear what he says to you. And, and then I want you to say the last part of that verse says, uh, uh, the law of God, comma, the Ten Commandments. Now, if you want the law of God, and we know, and I can't remember who mentioned this uh, last Sunday, that they had added by the time of the Roman occupation, they had added so, added so much to the law that they were washing their hands three times in the middle of a meal. You remember that? And, and they were criticized of Christ for that. It had all become behavioral. But I want you to see at the same time, he, he keeps this, the, the commandments, I mean, the law of God, comma, renaming the Ten Commandments. So, he got the information that, the God, that God's people, even today, treat as, uh, treat as at least a schoolmaster. I think that's time well spent, don't you? I, I think that's time well dedicated into the things of God. And, and we need to do the same thing. If it's 40 days or four hours, you need to spend some time alone with God. And it will, it, it will be of a great benefit to you. Verse 28, I mean, excuse me, verse 29 and it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. Now I want you to see the impact of what? The impact of an experience with God on the flesh. What was glowing? This right here, right? You know, sp time spent alone with God will impact your life. It'll impact your flesh. It'll, it'll impact what you like and what you dislike. Or it should, right? Everybody, you know, we live in a modern day. Oh, God loves us as we are. No, he most certainly does not. He detests us the way we are. The natural born man, uh, he's right and just uh, to hate us, right? He abhors sin. Is that not what the Bible teaches us? And, but we see in the person of Christ, he does love us. But I want you to see time spent like this impacts your everyday life. And if it doesn't, I have to come to the conclusion you've not spent a long time alone with him, right? You know, I used to get real stressed out, and, and I, I'll preach it hopefully to the day that I die, uh, concerning separation from this wicked, evil world, because I see what it does to our children. But you know what? I've about let it go as far as... <laughs> if you can be insistent, because see, if they spend time alone with Christ, I don't have to do somersaults. You see, you see what I'm saying? Spend a, time spent alone in that word will make you love it. I found that when I was dating Donna, the more time I spent with her, the more time I wanted to spend with her. 
kind of like a drug, right? And the very same thing, the more that we we embellish ourselves in private study, the more that we want. And, and God's people really don't do this anymore. And he was, he was so engrossed in the things of God, he didn't realize the impact it had on him. And he literally was glowing when he came off that mountain and didn't know it himself. Do you show the things of Christ? I'm not sure in the modern day that God's people glow. Do you? Uh, shame on us. Verse 30. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh, nigh him. Now, I think it's a very significant verse because... Did God's people want more of it? Or were they scared of it? They, they were frightened by it, wasn't it? They, they were upset. You ever said anything that kind of people were like, hmm? I've had a few experiences in my life. And you know what I found? It always comes down to money. And you know, that's what... You know the old saying when we were kids that makes what that's what makes the world go round, right? Mm -hmm. I remember when I quit my job at the school and I had told her I said, you know what this means. She wouldn't approve me some time to go off to preach a meeting. And of course I quit. And uh, she said, Well let me pay your contract off, because teachers work by contract, don't we? <laughs> I said, and I didn't mean it smart like, but I, I, this is what I said. I said, I don't want your money. I, I, I said, the Lord will take care of me. And she looked at me like I had six heads. You see what I'm saying? That's putting what we have into practice, is it not? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we find then, uh, we as the Lord's people, when we shine... It scares other people. And you know why I find it to be this way? It's because they don't trust Christ as much as we do. But let me say this when I say we as a generality, as much as people who spent time alone with Christ. You see what I'm saying? You know how difficult it is to find a nursing job that doesn't demand that you work on the Lord's day? Most people would say it's impossible. I've worked like that. I've been soon be a nurse in April. I'll be a nurse for thirty years. And the Lord's always helped me. I haven't always had what I wanted, but you know what? We put food on the table. And, and, and so we, as the Lord's people, need to begin to apply some of this. And we spend when we spend time alone with God, we'll have it. And, and the best I understand, Moses was sharing it and didn't even realize it. He was going like a light bulb and wasn't even aware of it. And it scared people that had or, or to have rejoiced with him. Verse 31, and Moses called them. And Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Now, I think this is very unusual. First of all, let me say, in the Old Testament, both the men and the women wore veils at the time to go to to go to uh, temple, but it was over their heads, and most of the Israelites had a blue band. Remember Lydia, the seller of purple. That's a very good indication that she was making priestly veils or veils for men to wear down to the temple. And, and anyway, that that is aside. In the Old Testament, everyone did. But see what you know what was not covered the face. But this man had been so much, had spent so much time 
with the Lord God that his face was shining and he had to put a, a little extra piece on. You ever when you sing anybody the first time you look at them are just as sour as they can be? You know, like, what have you been eating on persimmons? Uh, that doesn't speak much of Christ, does it? Moses glowed. He, he was happy. He was glad. And he so much showed the radiance of God in Christ that he was glowing. And we as the Lord's people, we need to be the very same way. When people leave us, when people are done talking to us, they can say, that man knows Christ. That man, and maybe they don't even know who Christ is, and, but they will leave saying, that man has something different than I do. That, that, that is what we really see here. Verse 33, and until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Now, also I want you to see that in addition to all this, it changed this time spent alone changed how he approached Christ, how he approached God, uh, uh, Jehovah. It was more intimate. He took his veil off when he went down in there. He, it, it was more, it was more uh, intimate. It was closer. It was, it was more one-on-one -on -one now. So we see them spending gr a, a great time together. Now remember, where is he at now? He's back in the wilderness tabernacle, right? He's not on Mount Sinai anymore, but the time on Mount Sinai changed his temple, the way temple time was going, did it not? You know what? Spend some time alone with Christ and it'll change your time here at the Lord's house. You ever wonder why you're so bored with preaching? Well, maybe you need to spend some time alone with Christ. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and that will motivate you into the things that we ought to do. Now, one more place, and we're going to close. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, very familiar verses of Scripture, and to show you that even Christ himself found it necessary to spend time alone with his Father. Matthew 26 and verse 36, while you're headed that way, I will remind you that Christ and John the Baptist, Christ, just like Moses, went up on the hill and spent 40 days and 40 nights and afterward was a hunger. And then we find that, that John the Baptist went, in, went into the wilderness three and a half years to spend time with Christ. I don't know that I've ever spent three and a half years doing anything. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it's all about priorities. And we find here in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, beginning in verse 36, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Now, I think it's the Gospel of Luke says of a place that they had resorted the word is not frequently but that's the meaning of the word and oft oft and um, yeah. and they knew that the place was familiar to them now the Lord Jesus is fixing to have an unbelievable experience and it's a routine place that they've been before. In other words, you don't have to travel great distances. It can be right here. Or it can be in your automobile. Or it can be in your house. It can be in your bedroom. It, it doesn't have to be extraordinary. So Gethsemane was something they were very, very familiar with. And they're at the routine place at the routine time. And I want you to see, he simply says, you tarry. Now, let me say, 
when it comes to Terry, that doesn't mean sleeping. And we're fixing to see that they get rebuked a little bit for that. And what did the Lord Jesus say in the Gospel of, uh, I think, Luke, maybe John, as he was ascending, uh, as he was getting ready to leave, he said, Occupy until I come. An occupation is not sitting around on your seat of do nothing either. It is being active. It is watching people come in and watching people going out and, 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 and defending the line. That, that's, and so we see this word tarry is very similar. You keep things up because I'm going over there to pray. You know, it seems like a pretty simple request to me, don't you? I've never seen Christ ask for stupendous things, have you? I really have. He hadn't asked me of it. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty easy thing to do. It's not extraordinary. But there's times I hadn't done it. So when we look at the apostolic people here, don't get, don't get too bent out of shape and, and down on the apostles about for what's about to happen because we do it frequently as well. Verse 30, And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Now this uh, this this is again information for you, and if you got some scripture to contradict it, I, I, I'm good to read scripture any time. But now this cup that he spoke of, I do not believe it was death. And you know why? He always knew he was a victor over death. Whenever he explained what was coming to his apostles, uh, he said, "Did he not say, and on the third day I will arise?" It wasn't that. You know what that cup, that nasty cup he was talking about? It was my sin and your sin if you're saved and your sin if you're saved and all the sins of the elect. Amen. He didn't want to drink it, did he? And again, this is, if you don't believe particular redemption, think about this. That cup would only hold so much. Right? He didn't drink the sins of the world. He drank the sins of his people, of those that, those that are his. And so we see that when he's coming unto his father, he's not asking to be excused from death because death could not hold him anyway. Verse 40, And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could he not watch with me one hour? Now two things I want you to see. First of all, they did fall asleep. And the Lord's church is about asleep in the modern age. Yeah. And also I want you to see this. Could you not watch with me an hour? Now the sentences of his prayer, how long did that take me to read to you? Maybe four seconds? But he was gone an hour. What's, what's your prayer life consist of in time? The best I understand, if this is the entirety account of that of that event, he didn't say anything else. He waited on his answer. Mm -hmm. A whole hour. And you know what? The best thing I know, he didn't get it then either. He had to go back. Do you ever have to go back to the Father at prayer time? Boy, I do. And sometimes, you know what? I have to go back more than three times. Sometimes I have to go back four or five. Finding the message that needs to be preached. Thinking that you may have offended somebody uh, along the way. You know, we don't give enough time on how we say things and what we do. Right, right. We need to pray about that. And, and so there's all kinds of things that you can go on to Christ about. And, and lay those issues out before him, and we find that the Lord Jesus does that very well here. Verse 42. Uh, verse 41, excuse me. Watch and pray 
that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, notice the first request was watch and pray for me. He no longer requests prayer from them for himself, but he requests prayer saying, you need to pray for yourself. You pray you don't enter into temptation. And you know what? The best we understand the scripture, all 12 of them did. They ran like scalded dogs, right? Peter even went so far to curse and lie about it. I ain't one of them. Remember? And, and, and so we find now that their prayer is shifting and Christ goes back and prays the exact same thing. He went again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Now, this, this is the clincher, church. If you spend enough time with Christ, you'll want what he wants over what you want. Remember, the first prayer said, just let it pass from me. Now he's saying, I want to do your will. I, 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 want, I want to find, if it's difficult, if it's hard, if it takes me away from my family, if it makes me go to strange places, your will be done. Your will be done. And, and, and that's, a, that's a huge change in a very short time. He is now ready to accept the Father's will. Verse 43, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and he left them. This time he doesn't even wake them up. He doesn't even say, hey, wake up and pray. Uh, get yourself together. He just walks away. You ever wonder uh, how many times Christ came into you uh, in the church age, the Holy Ghost came unto you and found you spiritually asleep and just kept going? That's it. It's a scary thought, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I know he's found me napping. <laughs> right? You know, the best thing, what, the best uh, way to take care of that napping is to engage yourself in this book and time spent alone yeah. with God Almighty. And so this time he doesn't even say anything to them. Verse 44, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now. That's probably some of the saddest words in the Bible, is it not? Yeah. I know he said them to me. Sleep on now. Get your rest. Be, be, <laughs> enjoy what you have. Sleep on now. Take your rest. Behold, the hour's at hand, and the sun... And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand which doth, which doth betray me. And you know the rest of the story as well as, as I do. Judas comes in, gives him a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> and I love John's account, thing, don't you? When Jesus said, whom seek ye? And it knocked the whole crowd down. <laughs> Just the words. So again, I always remember that they couldn't take Christ. He went willingly. He, he did it with full understanding. Right. And then, on the cross, he, he died for my sins. If you're saved, he died for your sins. Right. If you're one of the elect, he died for your sins. And that's why he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because see, that bitter cup he was drinking, God Jehovah couldn't look at it. He, he couldn't be part of what was going on down there. 
So he turned his back on him. You imagine turning your back on your children? That, that is outside my understanding. And I, I've seen people do it, but at least me, that is outside my understanding. When Adam left home, one of the last things I said to him, son, as long as I have a place, you have one too. But you know what? Because of God's holiness, he turned his back on him. And I'll go even further, because of your ungodliness, he turned his back on his own son. Yes. Yep. That's love that I that I won't under, I want to understand, but I don't think I'll fully ever understand it until I'm with Christ. Mm-hmm. I know it's there, but it's sure hard for me to get my head around it. <laughs>